Um, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Yap Yifan, and today I'm going to be talking about the experiment I did with my groupmate, Soshi, on Stokes' Law. So the objective of this experiment is to determine the terminal velocity of spheres with different volumes and also the viscosity of honey. The other objective that I want to talk about is also the verification of Stokes' Law's limitations. We know that Stokes' law have um, some limitations. For example, the object has to be a sphere falling through a fluid. It has to be a small object, object and the flow of the fluid has to be laminar, not turbulent. But in this experiment, we're just going to look at the size of the uh, object affecting the Stokes' law. Now, the definition of terminal velocity is the maximum speed attainable by an object as it falls through a fluid. It is reached when the sum of drag force and buoyancy is equal to down force of gravity acting on object. Now, what does this mean? When you drop an object into a fluid, the downward force acting on it is the weight. There's two upwards force acting uh, on the object. One of them is the uh, drag force and the other one is the buoyant force, which is just um, the weight of the volume displaced. Now, drag force will increase as the velocity of sphere is increasing because at the start of dropping the ball, uh, the acceleration downwards is very high because uh, there's only weight acting on it at first. But then as it goes in, to the fluid, there's um, forces acting on it. So drag force increase, increase, increase until it's in equilibrium with the weight. And then there are no more accelerations. So it is in constant velocity from that point on. That is terminal velocity. Besides that, viscosity means the measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. It describes the internal friction of a moving fluid. For example, when you drop an object in water, it passes through it like easily. But when you drop it in honey, for example, it it is more uh, resistant to the object flowing through it. So moving on to the experiment itself. The procedure, uh, there's five steps. Number one is you prepare the experiment. You add 200 milliliters of honey to 250 milliliters measuring cylinder. And then you put two rubber bands on the measuring cylinder, one here, one here, and the gap should be 10 cm. We're going to use that to calculate this uh, velocity later. Second step is you drop a large size ball into the measuring cylinder and you measure the time taken for the ball to go from one rubber band to another rubber band, which is 10 centimeters. centimeters. Repeat the experiment with um, different sized balls. And after that, we can record the data and calculate the terminal velocity and viscosity of honey, which is the substance that we'll be using for our experiment. Now we can see um, the large ball, it drops ah. very quickly, uh, roughly around 2.5 seconds. It has already passed through. Now we can see that the time taken is now longer, which means the velocity should yeah. be less than the large ball. And we can Everyone also see tired. that the flow yeah. is actually laminar. Let's look yeah. at it again. Yeah. Right, you can see that the ball drops through the fluid smoothly. Um, if it's not a laminar flow, it's going to look something like um, you drop the ball, it's going to move like maybe left, right, left, right a bit. That's a yeah. turbulent flow. So we don't have to worry about the one of the uh, restrictions in Stokes' law. And here's the small ball. Time. 
You can see it takes like way longer than the two balls we've seen before. So now we can record the data in the spreadsheet. Now, what do we need to um, calculate the viscosity and terminal velocity later? We need the radius of the sphere the density of the sphere as well as the density of the fluid and also uh, velocity of um, the objects. So we see here that we calculated the diameter, which we then converted to radius and then we square it. Uh, I'll show you why we square the radius later, but for now, let's just keep it at that. And also we calculated the velocity for each spheres. We also measured the volume and also mass of honey to get the density of honey and also the density of ball. <clears throat> and now I've plotted a graph um, V to R squared. Note that if we look at the X axis, cause um, we're using SI unit so that when we calculate, we don't have to uh, convert everything again. It takes a long time. So I'm just going to like plot the graph in SI unit which means the radius square is in meter square, but the value is too small. So um, I wrote 10 times 10 to the power negative four at the end of the axis. Uh, so the value, all the values down there are all multiplied by 10 to the power negative four. It is important to remember that we use uh, 10, 10 to the power negative four when we are um, getting the gradient later. And I'll show you what happens if you don't remember that. Also, another thing to note in the graph, um, we can see that the first two dots um, fit like the best fit line um, nicely. But at the large board, we can see that it is an outlier. So we will talk about what is wrong with the outlier later. Now we're calculating the uh, viscosity. Now, according to Stokes' law and um, arranging the formulas, um, it starts from weight is equals to drag plus um, buoyant force. Um, once we rearrange that and make the V, the terminal velocity, the subject, we are going to get this equation, which is V equals to 2R squared G times um, density of the Sphere minus density of the fluid, the whole thing divided by 9 eta, which is uh, viscosity variable constant, viscosity constant. And so um, anything except for V and R squared is a constant in this equation. So that's why I plotted a V over R squared graph just now. And the rest of the constant will actually be the gradient of the graph. So we can use that to find the viscosity of honey. Now, by searching online, we know that the average viscosity of honey is around two to 10 Pascal seconds. So we can use this um, data to um, check our results later. All right, calculating the viscosity, we know that the gradient is uh, you know, V over R squared, which we then get um, 3,783.78. Um, this is the value uh, we get when we remember to times 10 to the power negative 4 for R squared. And so we can see that the viscosity of honey is around 3.68 in our experiment. But what if you forgot about that important thing? This is what's going to happen. Uh, when you forgot to multiply the radius squared by 10, 10 to the power negative 4, you get gradient of 0 0.45, which results in your viscosity being 31,000 Pascal seconds. <laughs> Imagine that in your head, like the honey is like rock solid, maybe even more than rock solid, right? I don't, I don't even know how much is 31 Pascal seconds, but it is a high value. So by using the correct gradient, we have verified that Stokes law works for the first two balls and the third ball because the 
volume is too big. That's why it has exceeded the Stokes loss limitation. All right. So we've also verified the viscosity of honey uh, and the terminal velocity. We actually cal already calculated it in the um, data recording part. And so we can go to our conclusion. Um, we have verified, you know, the limitations does exist in Stokes law uh, by looking at the graph. Um, that is all I have for you guys today. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you.